Okay, so I actually know all of these moms, so I'm super excited to have them all here. And a few of them tried to dodge me, so <laughs> I'm going to throw Jamie under the bus. She sent me a text last night, just said, hi, and, and then she paused, and I'm like, I am not going to let you bail. I'm driving to your house. She lives like a half mile from me right now. I go, I can walk to her house now. I'll come. <laughs> so I'm thrilled she's here. So. All right, let me go through these mom panels first. Darcy Stratton, welcome, welcome, my beautiful friend. She's a mom of three boys, married to her wonderful hubby of almost 20 years. They live on a ranch in Loomis where fun family memories are created with her boys. Anyone see her do a handstand recently? Yeah, Darcy loves to do handstands. Darcy, is a, she, her jam is to ride horses and dream big dreams. She's approaching her 14th year as a real estate agent, loves the possibilities of this business. Every day is different, energetic, and honestly wild. She loves to see others accomplish their dreams. She also was in the Olympics. She was in the Olympics. What were you, what did you do? She, what did you do in the Olympics? I did vaulting gymnastics on horses. Gymnastics vaulting on horses. Like, is that not crazy, crazy? Yeah, that's Darcy. Um, so she volunteers a ton of her time at her kid's school. You'll find her on baseball fields, on her horse, negotiating contracts, and lots more. She's pretty amazing. Okay. Next, we have Jennifer Sanvos. Jennifer started her sales career over 20 years ago. In 2003, she received her real estate license. She has six children that she birthed all of them. <laughs> and one set of twins, right? One of them are twins, or two of them are twins, I guess. Uh, she's extraordinary. She's married to her amazing husband, Zach. He's not here today, is he? No. No, he's in prison. He's in prison, yeah. He's a, actually a prison guard. <laughs> he's a prison guard. Let's clarify, he's a prison guard. <laughs> Not that we're judging if your husband is in prison, but <laughs> her husband is a prison guard. Right? <laughs> so, um, uh, so she's awesome. She's always strived to enhance her knowledge. Um, she has spent her real estate years learning different aspects of the business. And she, we all know we all know. I'm not going. She, oh, her and her husband have yard dog coffee roasters. Again, you guys can read these lengthy bios on the QR code on the, she hit the QR code on there. Okay, and then they moved around on me. <laughs> okay. Well, the good news is it actually, you're now in the order that was on here. So there you go. Ashley Haney. So Ashley Haney is a president managing broker of Haney Realty Group, a boutique real estate brokerage in Rockland. She was the president of PCAR in 2020. Like, I mean, could you pick a year to be president? It was a year of COVID, right? But she did an extraordinary job. She worked with state and local officials as well as association leadership to help ensure real estate remained an essential business in our county. Thank you for that, Ashley. Additionally, Ashley is also a director for California Association of Realtors. She's passionate about real estate, but her true why are her children, Riley and Rocco, her bonus children, Ruby and Isaac, as well as her new husband, Nate, who works as a correctional officer. Oh, he's in prison too. They have a common theme up there. <laughs> she strives to set an example of hard work and dedication to her children who also serve the community in which they live. Jamie, my beautiful Jamie. So Jamie is a wife and mom to five kids which you did birth them all, right? No, no three. Four. Four and one, right. So she still has five kids. <laughs> I have six, three with my um, husband, Joe, one of which is Philip, that handsome, dapper young man over there. And then uh, three with my husband, Joe, and three with him. He had three that came along, somewhere in there. Anyway, Jamie is a wife and mom to five kids, realtor with Realty One Group, complete team leader to an amazing team. She has grown her business over the past eight years by focusing on relationships over transactions and thrives on pouring into her clients, team, and family. She works side by side with her husband, Jeremy, and together they stay very busy. And they just bought a farm, which is literally right down the street from me. I was so excited when I saw she bought it. I go, I'm gonna walk over with coffee. Well, it's a little bit of a walk. I'll drive over with coffee, yeah, yeah. Because I have to drive. Oh, I can take my side by side. There you go, yeah, so. Um, and I met Jamie when she was pretty new in real estate. So we spent a lot of time talking and we go way back. She's awesome. Okay, last but certainly not least, Nikki James started her real estate career over 13 years ago in San Diego. Not a bad place to be. Uh, Nikki graduated from San Diego State in 2009, holds a bachelor's degree in business administration, emphasis in marketing. 
Born and raised in Sacramento area, she returned to her roots in 2012. Today, she leads a highly productive team at Remax Gold in Sacramento, El Dorado, and Placer County Markets. She's gained a wealth of knowledge and understanding of market trends, strategies, and practical solutions. She is married to Anthony James. Where's Anthony? Say hi, Anthony. Where is he? He's, he's back in the corner. Uh, we told the men they had to be at the back of the room, right? No, we're kidding. Um, and they enjoy serving their community, church, and friends, raising their kids, Leighton, Garner, and Sloan in Roseville. So welcome, 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 ladies. Excited to have you here. All right. So this is always one of my favorite panels because, as I mentioned, um, I've been in real estate since before my son Jake was born. I started in real estate. I carried him in a little baby carrier like Taylor is. Um, to my appointments and you just do what you have to do right and I think the beauty of real estate is that we do have that flexibility with our family and uh, being able to raise our kids and work around that when I ask my kids now what it was like growing up with a real estate mom I don't know what do you say Jake how was it growing up with a mom in real estate <laughs> Hectic, but the beauty was uh, that I was always able to be there um, for many of the most important things. But so we got some good questions on here, and uh, I'm excited about them. They're all great. I didn't give them; they didn't get access to the questions, right? So um, we will start with um, let's talk about mom guilt. Like that's a big one, right? How many of you guys have mom guilt? So before I let them talk into this, I'm going to tell you, I remember when my son John, Jake's younger brother, he was about four years old, and I was at work, and I was pushing really hard. I was selling a lot of homes then. It was super important to me. And I get a phone call from him, and he's like, Mom, we're supposed to go to the movies at four, Mom. You're not here yet, Mom. Mom, are we going to be able to go to the movies today? I really wanted to see Shark Tales, Mom. <laughs> well, that's okay, Mom. I love you. And he hung up the phone. And my heart sank just like all of yours did, right? And that day, I remember making a decision that I had to figure out how to make my kids number one priority. It's not easy, you guys. We struggle with it every day. So I guess that is really one of the questions that I wanted to start with. How about we start with you, Nikki? Oh, grab a microphone. Let's see. Where, is there, oh, there you go. <laughs> uh, so the question... Is how do you deal with mom guilt? Like what, what do you have and how do you push through it? Like have there been situations that have challenged you with that? Yeah, absolutely. I think all of us have probably gone through it. Um, I think, I, I think controlling what I can control has been a big one that I've I've worked on over the years. You know, I've I've um, gone through the ringer on do I want to be working mom? Do I want to be a stay at home mom? What do I want this to look like? And I always come back to loving my career and being able to show my kids that I'm, I'm working and doing something I'm passionate about and that I'm good about or I'm good at. And I love, um, I love being able to show them that, but then also bring them in it with me. And it makes me feel less guilty that I'm over here doing this. I get to explain to them, hey, this is what mommy's doing today. I get to, oh, I sold that house, and they get excited about it. I feel like I can like open my world to them and explain to them. Hey, right now when I'm on my phone, I'm working. But when I'm, you know, I, I, I try to dedicate like, hey, my phone is going to be in the other room for these 45 minutes or whatever it is. I'm on the ground playing with the Legos or for this time. But then it makes me feel uh, freedom to then work when it's time to work, you know. And so trying to separate um, some really designated time makes me feel less um, guilty about when I need to be working, you know. And so that that helps you know, sep separate it for me. Awesome. Thank you. Um, so I don't know that I probably deal with it well. When I first started in real estate, I was like 50-50. I wanted to be home all day, every day, like all, barefoot in the kitchen making cookies when they walked in from school. And also 100% of me wanted to be like running the real estate world. So I struggled. Um, and I think you know, like Nikki said, just really making sure you're giving specific boundaries and bringing your kids into the business with you. Like that's one of the biggest benefits I think as moms raising kids is that they're watching us build these businesses and it's in an industry that matters. They're going to deal with it with their friends, their own lives. They're going to be buying houses. They're going to be selling houses. So I think just really pulling them in and spending time and then giving yourself grace um, really and, and teaching your kids that you're a human, you make mistakes. Um, I've 
been late to things. I've missed things. Um, I, I try not to, right? And we have the flexibility to make our own schedules. But having grace for yourself when you do and teaching your kids that you also are human, you need grace, um, I think is, is huge. Awesome. Okay, um, so I've been in the business about nine years now, and my kids are nine and 11, and I have got a divorce from their dad when my son was one years old. So I basically, up until last year, was a single mom running a real estate business, and I have to admit at the beginning, it was really, really hard. I was getting pulled in a lot of different directions. Single mom, God, it could make me tear up, right? And I found myself even resenting my kids a little bit because I really needed to work, but I really wanted to be there for everything, and I just didn't know how how to manage that. And so I really made the conscious decision to be intentional with my time. And like you said, it's really hard to set those boundaries and stick to it. Um, but over the last few years, I've been able to surround myself with, with people. And, and so I even had the talk with my kids on the way to school today because I said, hey, I'm gonna go talk about being a mom and a realtor. What should I say today? And they're like, you know what's really cool, mom? You're one of the only working moms who still picks us up at school. And even if you have to be on the phone, we totally get it. We'd rather you pick us up at school. And this came from yesterday because they were telling me about this really exciting story about what happened at school. And I was trying to get an escrow for somebody. And I said, OK, be quiet. Um, <laughs> it's a, they know work call. Don't say a word. Uh, it was an adjustment for my stepkids to come in because their parents are both in law enforcement. And they're like, what the heck? So they know. Um, c be quiet. Wrapped up my call. We got home. We finished the story. I took some time to be with them. Uh, but the biggest thing is, like you said, bringing it in with your family, making it a family business. We celebrate every closing as a family, and they can see the sacrifices and the rewards from the sacrifices they make. So, That's great. I like that. Let's see. Mom guilt. Well, when I started in real estate, I had two kids, and now I have six. <laughs> so I've done all sorts of different stages. She had time, of apparently. <laughs> if I didn't, he made sure I did. So <laughs> she started. Um, I would say the older I've gotten, the less guilt I feel. Mainly because I like my husband more and the kids less. And so, like Ashley said, though, I'm still get to be the one to pick them up from school, unless their dad's not in prison, and then it's all him. So. I still get to be there. I get to be there for those things. And the reality is, is my kids live a very blessed, spoiled, rotten life. They have horses. They have vacations. They've been to Hawaii. They've been here. They've been there. I didn't get any of that when I was a kid. I didn't get a horse. My parents didn't even put me in any kind of... Lessons. She's in therapy too, by the way. I am. <laughs> I'm in therapy. But I'm just saying... I didn't get that as a kid. <laughs> and I had to walk home five miles in the snow. Oh, in the snow. <laughs> Barefoot. Both ways. But my parents both worked full time. They weren't there to pick me up. I had to do my own thing. I mean, by the time I was 15, I was working 40 hours a week at Jack of the Box in Auburn. Like, I, I've just always been that mindset. And so even in those moments where I go through phases where I'm really busy and working really hard, I remind my kids, like, do you like your horse? Do you like the food, the lovely organic food in your belly? Do you like your chickens, your dogs, your cats, your vacations? Like, this, the braces on your teeth, the cars you get. This is all because mommy's working really hard to help provide that. Your dad works too, but mommy has a job, and that's what pays for all those extras. And so it helps remind them. And they do, they do come with me a lot, too. I do involve them. Um, my 15-year-old especially, she will very proudly wear her Jennifer Samus Realty Group shirt. She's the cutest. She's all trained in how to open up lock boxes. And she remembers different. There's a house near us that we went in once that was rat infested. And she's like, Mom, remember that house? It had rats in it. It was disgusting. I'm all, yes, honey, it did. It's, but so I've always tried to keep them involved. And there's been times where I had a baby strapped to me at home inspections. I had a bit, you know, like, I've been there, done that, you name it. We homeschooled for 14 years. I got healed from that, though, so they're all in school now. <laughs> um, so, but I, I've just learned that you just have grace for yourself and you do what you can. And I try to be there as much as possible. So, um, I love how you said that you celebrate here. Things. That's really good. So I remember every Saturday out there showing property, right? And seeing families playing ball. And I'm like getting mad because I'm not home playing ball with my kids too, right? And so that was a guilt that I had to like struggle with. But then I could take my kids to school every day. 
I'm there when they need me to come participate in the classroom. Like there's give and takes, right? But there's that mom guilt that every Saturday I'd be out there working and people were at home, you know, my kids were at home. But you have to remember, I think it's really, really important for my kids to see that I'm successful too. It's not just my husband, it's me too. Like it's okay for mom to go out and make money too and have a thriving job. So I just think it's like every day I struggle with it. There's nothing, I don't know, I don't know how to make it better, honestly. But I think we have to go back to the flexibility. My mom worked, was a teacher. I never saw her, you know, and it was okay. That was okay. So I think it's good for us to be out there, be thriving, let our kids see a mom be successful, and, um, and then set those boundaries when it's time to have our kids around, you know, then put the phone away. Like, that's an important thing. Like, I hide it, I hide it in my bathroom, like, it's hidden there, and I'm like, and then you don't think about it, you know. So, yeah, I mean, I struggle, but, you know, I think, yeah, yeah, awesome. yeah, yeah. You know, it's funny, um, because I always made the joke that if your kids don't end up in therapy, you didn't do a good job, right? So, and uh, my son is happy to go to therapy. He's, yeah, <laughs> and, right? And, and, you know, the thing is, is that there's so much, no matter, I, I, I guess the way that I hope everyone sees it is, no matter what you're doing, first of all, you're the only parents your kids have. They don't know any different, right? You're their only mom. And they get to spend that time with you. And the only person who's comparing themselves to other moms is you, right? And so just embrace that time with your kids because no matter how great of a job you think you do, then they become adults and they tell you how bad you screwed up, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> no, they remind you of the crazy things that they did and when you weren't there, you're like, how did that happen? I swear I was there. But um, they're, they, they turn out to be amazing humans when you do spend that time to talk to them. I'm incredibly blessed with my kids. I'm so, so proud of them and the, the human beings that they've become. And I know that Jake gets compliments all the time. People, he works at Sully's, by the way, and he does weddings and events. But people will, and Philip, the only reason he has Crispillo on his shirt is because everyone knows a Crispillo name. So, <laughs> but they're in the industry now, and I get to enjoy that with them. But we all have the flexibility to work around the schedule that we want to create so that we can raise our kids to be good humans in this business. You want to add something, Jamie? Yeah. Also, in the beginning, like you were saying, like on Saturdays, you would see all these families playing. So I missed a couple of things like early on, but then I remembered that like I make the schedule. And so I made it really clear. And obviously there's some things you can't get around, but for the most part, like I, and I have tried to coach like my agents on this really, really well, is you don't want to resent your business. And if you start missing things that are important to you and important, important to your kids, you know, to go sit at an open house for three hours, first of all, you're not going to be fully invested. You're not getting anybody out of that. And second of all, you're going to start to resent your business and you're not going to grow. Mm -hmm. And, and you're going to resent your kids, right? Like you said. So making those, like, blocking your calendar out for the things that are non-negotiables and are super important to you and your family is step one. And then you work your business in and your buyers in and all the, those other things around that. Yeah. So that's and you helpful. don't have to tell clients that you're going to your kid's mm -hmm. baseball game. You could simply say, I have a client appointment during that time. I'm not available, right? And you don't necessarily have to tell them. But also, too... If you're attracting the right tribe, the, tri the right clients that are like you and are going to know you like you and trust you and you're building your business right, they're respectful of that. They want you to be with your family. Like people will say, oh, hey, I don't want to bother you. I know you take Sundays off to be with your family, mm -hmm. right? So they will tell me that to help me keep those boundaries in place, right? Yeah. Or maybe just leave them in the car when you go to a show. <laughs> like I did yesterday. Yeah. Not in the heat. <laughs> They're the old enough. The it was your <laughs> listing, Marguerite. <Exactly. laughs> Crack the window. Oh, was it my listing? Yeah, no, it, it was only for a minute, but yeah. <laughs> she calls me the other day. She goes, oh my God, I have to be, I'm going to be there in 20 minutes. I'm like, okay. So she up. We're in contract together, by the yes, way. So, yes, Woo! there you go. Woo! Which and is the value. in this room. <laughs> Very, well, congratulations. Yeah. Um, so the value, too, I want to point that out, is of those relationships, right? Mm -hmm. Is getting to know the people in your industry. Because I can promise you, when I see someone like Ashley or Jamie or one of these guys on the other end of a transaction, I'm much more likely to figure out what I can do to make it work because they're putting in the effort to have a relationship with me and vice versa, mm -hmm. right? I mean, we've all done deals together in that way. It's important. Okay, so next question is, who is your superhero? Darcy, start. 
What's the Peloton instructor's name? Oh <laughs> <laughs> Robin Azul, is it? Oh, my, I'm in love with her. <laughs> She's like, straighten your crown. I only ride with royalty. Like, every time I ride, I take, I literally have tears in my eyes every time I ride with that guy. Has anybody ever taken her class, Robin? No, but I'm going to look her up yoked. now. She is phenomenal. She's a mom. She has pictures of her nursing her baby. And she just has, she used to be a lawyer, and she quit her job. She didn't like it. And Arzon, there we go. Her is name it, is Robin Arzon. Isn't she amazing? There you go. She's yeah. absolutely amazing. So get your Pelotons out. Or come wisdom. use mine because it's sitting in the closet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the words of wisdom. Yeah. I'll text Alicia sometimes. I'm like, Alicia, I'm text her all these things that I'm hearing from her. But she motivates me. So she's my little hero right awesome. now. Awesome. Thank you. I, I don't even know what to say after that. Right. Um, Peloton? I don't have a Peloton goddess that I, I mean, I have a Peloton, but I'm not, I haven't taken her class yet. Apparently I need to. It's not in my closet though. So I've got that going okay. for me. Um, gosh, I don't know. Who can Wonder Woman be one? Sure. Um, I, man, I don't even know actually. Pro actually, I mean, probably other moms in the industry like Marguerite or Darcy or Cindy. Like those are the women that I surround myself with. That, um, like Jennifer said, iron sharpens iron. Like you are the what is it? The closest you're nearest to the closest five friends around you or whatever. So when I'm having moments where I'm struggling or having a hard time or whatever, those are the people that build me up. Those are the people when I'm like having trouble in real estate or whatever, I'm calling them going, okay, this is what's happening. Heather Sims, wherever she, she's over there, probably holding a baby. Um, that woman keeps me sane because um, like Marguerite, there's numerous times where I need to be shut up <laughs> and Heather won't hold anything back. So for me, it's not some per, it's just the people that I surround myself really that are the ones that I look up most to and that I want to be like and so that's for me I don't Perfect. have like some magical peloton goddess I, I, feel like I, <laughs> I feel like I should but there you I, go Ashley um mine would have to be my mom because so my mom was a working mom both my parents worked uh when I was growing up so I was picked up by somebody else or I'd have to go to daycare so my mom selflessly quit her job as the HR director for the city of Roseville when she was 47 right when I started my real estate career so that I could go and, and thrive on my business and that I, my kids didn't have to be raised in daycare. And so she was so selfless and she had her mom guilt from, from the past. So she wanted to go ahead and pay it forward at that time when she had an opportunity to me and my kids. And so my kids have been able to be raised with so many experiences and opportunities, which has allowed them to thrive. So her selflessness makes me want to be a better person and she's always there for us. So I, she is my hero. Perfect. That's good. That's hard to follow, too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I would say it's a, it's a little bit of both. My mom raised me as a single mom, worked hard, but, like, anything for her kids. And so she just taught me that you put your kids first, really. I mean, there's other things. But she would do anything for anyone, especially her kids, despite the fact that she was working long hours and just juggling it all. So her, my husband, is my yes man. So I have all these ideas in my head and I can't execute them because I'm only one person and he runs around all over the place, picking up kids, dropping off kids, picking up stuff, going to the store, doing projects. I mean, no matter what it is, he says yes. And to me, that's just, it's invaluable because I'm only one person, so. That's amazing. Aww. Stand up, Jeremy. Where are you? He's back there. For me, this is really, really easy. Um, it's my husband, for sure. He is my biggest fan. He is my cheerleader. He canceled his whole day to be here just to support me because he's, he's just my biggest uh, supporter. So I don't want to... But um, I just appreciate, like, he, he has a big workload a big job he he does all the things and he still will make the lunches and the dinners and the and no questions asked i'm on my phone during date night he's no questions asked i mean just the amount of grace he gives me and our family is incredible so, you. you know it's it's funny because they're talking about their husbands as well and my hero is my personal assistant which is my husband joe <laughs> he loves to be called um, my personal assistant. And some of you may or may not have known I wrote a book this last year called The 100 Things I Love About You. And he likes to say he is the you in mm. that book. And I'm going to tell this story briefly because I think it has impact here. 
Where the book came about was when my children were young. Uh, they were probably six or seven, and life was crazy. I was working nonstop, you know, 100 hours a week, trying to sell homes and keep our family alive. Um, my husband had been in the mortgage business in uh, the secondary market. <laughs> oh, yeah, that guy over there. <laughs> and I don't know about you, but relationships go through their challenging moments, right? And I woke up one day, and I said... Today's the day. We're either going to a counselor or an attorney. You decide. <laughs> and my husband said, huh? <laughs> like many men, didn't know what was going on. And luckily, he's a smart man, so he went to a counselor. And we went to the very first appointment, and they're like, why are you here? And he's like, because she made me. And I said, wrong answer, jerk. <laughs> And we went to the second appointment, and they talk about your family background, and he comes from old world Spanish background. He's first generation American, and where they stayed married forever. They were Catholic, and that's how it was. And I, my mom was married four times, and that's just the ones she married. So I didn't really have any good role models growing up in my life, and I just figured, oh, it doesn't work out. I'll move on, right? That's just what you do. So the third appointment, you go back separately, and the counselor was like, so are you done, done, or is there still a chance? Are you still willing to work at it? And I go, well, he's at least here, so I'm at least willing to see what we can do. So the counselor said, okay, well, I would like you to make a list of the things that you love about him. I go, oh, I've done the pros and the cons. <laughs> pros outweigh the cons. I don't think I can come up with any of those on that list right now. And he goes, no, let's skip the pros. He goes, I would just like you to make a list of the things that you love about him. I'm like, I need a new therapist. Mm. Right? So, so I went home, and after a few days, I woke up one day, and there was tea next to my bed. And I said, okay, well, I love that about him. Uh, I love that he's a great dad. I love that he's funny. I love that he is my yes man as well, that he's willing to do anything, anytime, anywhere that I want him to. And truth be told, I only made it to 45 on the list. My goal was 100. But I'll also tell you that he did nothing. He changed nothing. I gave him that list for our anniversary. The only thing that changed was my perspective. And so many times we get really caught up when our lives are crazy busy with kids and life and all the things that we're trying to do. And, you know, men are pretty simple. They don't need a whole lot. <laughs> Um, but we're the complicated ones, right? The men are all like, uh-huh. <laughs> um, we're the complicated ones. And the truth is, is that even whether it's in real estate, whether it's in your relationship, whether it, it is something, many times we just have to stop and really be grateful and change our perspective and remember why we fell in love with them and remember all the little things that they do in a day because it's really easy to get focused on everything that's gone wrong, right? And so um, I had told that story a few times, and people said, write a book. So I wrote a book. Copies of my book are over there next to the Mr. You, <laughs> Joe Crispillo, <laughs> my personal assistant. Um, so I brought that up because, I, again, when many of you are at that stage where you're trying to deal with so much, it's easy to step out of your relationship and that be the lowest part priority in your focus when it needs to be a top priority, right? It needs to be you, your significant other, your children, then work. And we have a tendency many times to flip that switch. And it's really important that you pay attention to all of those things. So, okay, enough about me. Um, let's move on. So, do you have any funny mom real estate moments when you had to bring your kids with you to meet clients? Something entertaining. Oh, Darcy's got a good one already. Go ahead. Oh. <laughs> so um, I was showing I was showing like a 1.4 house in Serrano I've told this one but it's so good <laughs> and um, I get out and I have my three year old with me and the listing agent you know she's in the beautiful Mercedes she's dressed to the nines and I'm like a disaster my hair's like in a bundle juice box falls on I got my three year old with me <laughs> and my client's there and they have no kids and she's like, oh, do you not have a babysitter? You know, and I was like, I couldn't today, sorry. It's going to be just fine. <laughs> Everything's fine. <laughs> so we go in, and we're looking at the home, and the agent was lovely. We're just chatting. And my son falls in the pool, right? <laughs> oh. 
<laughs> and I like grab him out, and I'm like, oh no. And he's like, I can't be in wet clothes. And so now he has to be naked. So now he's <laughs> naked, wet. I'm carrying him, my client, she doesn't have any children, you know, and she's trying to give me grace, but there's no, and I'm like, sorry, you, know, <laughs> you still want to buy it, you don't want the oil, you know, so yeah, I mean, it was just me having to multitask and be a little bit of a train wreck. And Did they buy the house? They bought the house. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> yeah. They're still my client, too. Oh, ah, that's awesome. That's awesome. I, I really can never, ever in my life will be able to top that unless I take Riker with me and chuck him in a pool. Then maybe. <laughs> um, I didn't really take the kids. So I've generally had a rule where I don't take the kids with me to showings and stuff. And I've had a lot of um, blessings with the fact that I don't normally have to because I have a lot of friends and family. And now I have adult kids. I can watch the younger kids. And for the most part, they don't kill each other, burn the house down. So, um, so I would say the most interesting thing for me as a mom, and I'm going to apologize now to the men in the room, but I had six babies. They were breastfed. My greatest talent as a mom, the last one, the final one, the sixth one, I discovered how to drive while pumping so I could make better time <laughs> in order to get to those showings. So I can't even tell you how many times. Somebody's probably driving. I've got this cover and the things are going, and they're probably like, what? <laughs> but it worked and I could multitask and save so much time it felt like it was a skill there it, you go I was very proud of myself there you go <laughs> superpower I, I feel like this is one of those ones you should have like prepared us for so we could have really thought because I'm sure we have funny stories and like Jen I don't take my kids often but when I do you know sometimes it has to happen but the one memory that my daughter will never forget because she's traumatized was I used to oh, excuse me um, host an annual Easter egg hunt, like as part of my annual thing. Jenna knows we, we had our annual Easter egg hunt, and so we'd have an Easter bunny there and everything. Well, I picked up my kids from school one day because we had the Easter egg hunt the next day, and I have this screeching scream I can hear because my daughter had turned around and saw this Easter bunny head in my back of my car, <laughs> <laughs> and she is so traumatized still from seeing that so anyways it wasn't real it's real estate related because it was for work but I, I typically don't take them either there you go yeah I don't I don't know if I have any like specific stories but when my boys were little so my I have teenagers that I worked full-time like in an office when they were little so they didn't really ever roll with me but my boys are eight and six and um, I took them to a lot of showings as little infants and I'm sure that they blew out of their diaper multiple times <laughs> and you know those like breastfed poops are not like oh, silent yeah. and like <laughs> it's like really obnoxious so that has happened when I met actually my lender um partner who's uh, one of my best friends now the first <clears throat> time I met her I thought she was going to murder me at a house that she wanted to see it was like that perfect call you know like hey I don't have an agent and I want to see your listing I was like <laughs> but I'll be there in 10 minutes. Yeah. And so I brought my little guy, Hudson, with me, and he was like a couple months old, and I <laughs> told myself, like, okay, I'm going to stand at the door, and if the car pulls up and it's not a woman, because she said she was a woman, I'm going to run with the baby. <laughs> <laughs> so I did stand at the door with my little, like, car seat, which is not light, you know? So I have, like, a three-month-old baby in a car seat, and there's probably blow out poop everywhere and she pulled up but there was a man driving and it was actually her sister not her and I didn't see the woman so I did walk outside and start to like slowly walk down the sidewalk with my baby carrier and then out pops her cute little sister who's like four foot nothing and everything was fine the rest is history but that was a fun one so uh, that's yeah awesome. that's awesome I have a good one I was um I was nine months pregnant with my third and I was showing a friend from high school, so it was someone I knew, um, showing her a home, and um, I like I went into labor like during the showing, so I'm oh. counting, full on counting contractions like against the wall. She's like, Nikki, should we go? And I'm like, No, 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 no. It's, fine. <laughs> it's like the third, I got time. It's the third one. You know what I mean? So. Um, so she's, she's walking through and she's like, okay, are you okay? Okay. So I literally went straight from the showing. We went to the hospital and so oh full on wrote the offer after the epidural was in. She, she got the oh, offer. Accepted. There you go. Wow. And yeah. And she, she bought the house. Yeah. So I'll that, never forget that, that closing on my daughter's birthday. That is awesome. That's so funny. 
Um, okay, so a couple more questions we have here and then we'll move on. Um, how do you use your children's activities to, full, to further your career? Like, are you doing things with your kids' activities? Are you sponsoring teams, team moms? Are you, are you marketing to their activities? How does that work? Who wants to go first? Um, I've, I've sponsored their teams and whatnot, but I don't make it a habit. I don't know, personally, I don't make it a habit. I, it's just my own style. I, just, I don't ever want anyone to feel uncomfortable, and, like, we have a very, like, infiltrated you know, industry right now, you know, and so I know a lot of people know people. So it's not one of my main pillars, but I have coincidentally gotten quite a bit of business from the kids' schools, but it's just more through relationships. And so I don't um, personally, like, ever talk about real estate when we're at the sporting games or the, you know, school events or whatnot. But if people ask and, you know, we it goes there, great. But I just never want there to be any sort of, like, ulterior, you know, or anyone to feel that way. So for me personally, I'm very, very low key in that regard, but my husband always puts the re our, my logo like on all the kids sporting things like without my knowledge and I'm like, all right, yeah. So um, it's worked out that way, but I don't, yeah, typically use that as, as part of my business. So we sponsor everything <laughs> <laughs> and not trying to be like in people's face, but also like I talk about real estate all the time. And that's actually how I like got started was I was like the opposite of a secret agent. So even though I had no deals going on, people would be like, how was your day? And I'd be like, huh, so busy. <laughs> I showed so many houses. I was at home all day, Yeah. <laughs> but they think that I was busy and then they like used me. So that was like soccer practice, brownies, like all the things, Te you know, team mom, room mom, all the things. I s I'm a serial yes -er, and that dirty yes person was great. Like my husband texted me about, I was like, remember that? So, <laughs> but I say yes to everything. And Honestly, like I don't, I don't mean to be like salesy about it at all, and I hope I never come off like that. But I talk about real estate just because it's like such a huge part of my life all the time, and so that's been huge and super helpful for me as far as like generating leads. Like I don't buy leads, I don't do open houses, so it's all sphere based, and a lot of that comes from just like being there, talking about it. People will say like, "Oh, what do you get when you sponsor a baseball team?" Nothing like I can give you zero ROI on that, but it's like name recognition. So then it just kind of comes full circle. Someone will say like, oh, I saw your name on the back of my kids. Actually, funny story. Marguerite just got a listing and it's in escrow, but I actually interviewed with them. Oh, and I love right. that she yeah. won it, yeah, well, thank uh, you. but they called me because my name was on the back of their kid's jersey. And so I thought that was cool. I didn't, it didn't work out, but it worked out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's gone yeah. back the other way too, it's just fine. for the it's record. Fine. Yeah, it's gone full circle. Yeah. 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 So for me, just like Jamie, I, it's all about visibility for me. I am a 0% salesy, but I, okay, so they're going to kill me when I tell you this back here. My, my people from my office, I don't have a database. Okay. Sorry. Okay. I know, I know. But somehow I've been able to, to manage. So I'm doing good. We're getting our database finalized. But we did go through and do all of our transactions for the last few years. And my kids are my main pillar. And so the reason that I do that is because I am the room mom, team mom, sponsor all the things. Business is a byproduct. So for me, being room mom, sending out that reminder email every couple weeks with my signature line, that led to $4 million in deals last year just from that one room mom that they had three different homes to sell. So I think it's about visibility. And if somebody wants to talk about real estate, then they talk about it. I showed up yesterday. I had a real estate jacket on. It's just about repetition, visibility, and showing up. And, and business will be a byproduct regardless. Like you said, there's no ROI on the $500 baseball. Um, my name's on the back of it. People know you're in real estate. If they want to use Nikki, cool. If they want to use Marguerite, great. I'm still here. Darcy's helped me so many times. We have a mutual friend. She showed her tons of homes. So it's like we all have to work together in a collaborative world. There's a lot of business to go around. So I think if we all have that mindset, and it's beneficial for the kids. So let's just give do good and business will be a byproduct. That's fantastic. That's okay. Um, so kind of similar, I do do different sponsorships. Once the kids were in school, I did make the mistake of joining the board the first year. Cindy and Darcy were a little late on telling me about the mistake that that was. But <laughs> that was a whole new adventure. Um, but for me, I sponsor different things, but same thing like what you said, Jamie, it's just, Real estate's such a big part of my life. It's 
amazing if I could shut that off. My husband just knows, like, he's so well-trained. That's why I can't ever get remarried. So, like, if we're out, like, even at a bar or out to dinner or something, he automatically knows. He starts sliding a business card out because he can hear the conversation next to us, and he's like, oh, God, here it comes. So rather than fighting it and elbowing me like he probably would like to do, he's just right there next to me already ready for me to grab a card and go, dink. So it's just... It doesn't matter what we're doing, whether it's with the kids or us or whatever. It, it's just always on my brain and always, you know, and people know your realtor and when you're sponsoring things, that does help. But I don't track the ROI on that either. It's just um, being in my kids' lives and that kind of naturally brings in the business that way. But Darcy here. <laughs> I just believe in putting the goodness out there and then that goodness will come back to you. So I don't have a name badge. I don't, you know, I tend not to promote. I just like to be involved in things that I feel passionate about, which is my kids and the schools. And so if I'm giving back there, and if somebody likes me and they like working with me and they see my work ethic, maybe they might want to see if I want to sell their home. So that's kind of been successful for me. Um, sometimes I may overcommit to things. Everybody who knows me knows me, you know. So I'm working on that, but I do love to volunteer for anything where especially if my kids can be there with me like yeah. that is awesome like if I me and Alicia I'm on our nonprofit we love to go do stuff with kids and animals super my jam right there and if I bring my kids be with my best friend and you know get a little business that's kind of cool awesome so everyone on this panel has been in real estate I think at least eight years or more right eight or nine what would you tell your younger you What would you tell the brand new you? You just started in real estate. What would you tell you? Okay, okay. Um, okay, so in the beginning, I started 14 years ago. It was all short sales, all foreclosures, right? I just had a baby. I literally would nurse with the Hooter Hider in show home. <laughs> I was a master at the nursing Hooter Hider. I didn't know that was a thing. Yeah, it's a, they're pretty awesome. I wish I'd invented them. So um, I was hard on myself, right? Because I'm like, I'm always not perfect, right? I don't show up perfect. Half the time I'm sliding in hot, right? But um, <laughs> just that rule. Um, you know, you feel insecure your first year. You feel... Um, you're not worthy, right? And remember, we all have our own strengths. So I always think a good agent is sometimes better than an agent that's been an agent for 20 years because they are so accessible, so hungry, so <laughs> want to do it right. There's no mistakes we can't fix, right? I mean, we might, have, might cost us some money, but there's nothing we can't fix. So I think I would go back to myself and say, hey, like dig into what my natural traits are. You don't have to be a fancy, Woo! amazing person. I get it up there. <laughs> <clears throat> um, to be a realtor, right? If you just have, I don't know, I have to say, tenacity, right? That's, that's going to be an amazing realtor right there. You have no fear. You're going to be an amazing realtor. Like, love those traits about yourself, and then experience and all the rest will come along. So embrace the inner, your inner ness. There you go. Straighten your crown. Straighten your crown. <laughs> um, I think for me, I was so... Uh, in the first few years of my business, I was so focused on next. That was my word, next. I didn't go to anything. I didn't give a crap about the transaction. Uh, it was just get to that next buyer, get to that next deal, next, next, next. I didn't build a database okay, don't judge me. until the last few years. So, um, And I had to always work so darn hard. If you want to work smarter and not harder, you like that? Um, have a database, because guess what? If oh, you start sure. loving on <laughs> You're working on it. You're working on it, I'm sorry. This isn't a dig at you. I did hey, the same thing Hey, when's the best like time to plant a tree 30 years ago? When's the next best so, time I'm today? Okay, guys. <laughs> this is fine. not a dig at Ashley, for the record. I love, 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 love her. Um, but it's a, at myself, though. Seriously, I only started my database maybe five years ago. But I have found in doing that, I'm... I don't have to work as hard for the business. Not saying that I don't hustle and I don't have grit and I don't get down and dirty and work hard, but business comes more naturally and just kind of almost falls on you if you love that database and you know, which even whether you have a database in actual practice or not, if you're out there in the community with the people, with your kids' friends and your friends doing things similar, 
you know, but when you're loving on that database, it, it just kind of naturally comes and it just makes your life a lot easier and you get more time with your family, with your kids. You get those weekends back um, because there are people who know you, love you, trust you, and have already used you in the past. So for me, I would have started my database sooner and I would have been, you know, going back to those past clients to get referrals and things like that. I just wasn't that smart when I started. I was really young. Facebook is my database. Okay, no, I'm working through it. Um, so I think for me, going back and, and what I would tell anybody coming through is just be very intentional. Um, for me, I, I got into real estate and I got my broker's license right away. So I thought, why not start a brokerage? Um, so I've got two really smart people around me and we started creating a brokerage. Well, I knew zero. I really did. I didn't know anything like the, the girls talked about earlier. Your first three years in real estate, it's like a whirlwind. And then I'm expected to teach other people when I don't even know what the heck I'm talking about. So I actually got approached by Colin Rowe. Um, I had just gotten my license and he's like, hey, come to YPN Aloha Night. It was their first one. And this is not a plug for PCAR, but for me, what I did is I dove into PCAR and I became an expert at something. I was visible and I created relationships. And so for me, joining the, the young professionals, it's led to a journey for myself, which has been very successful, um, tapping in with other realtors and it doesn't cost anything but my time. And so I've been able to collaborate with people like Darcy, or there's a group of us where, hey, do you have a home for sale in Loomis? And obviously doing past relationships, um, really diving in and, as, and using it as a collaborative business rather than a you versus me business. I think if we can all just put our arms around each other a little bit more and get involved, it's a very lonely business. So find people to surround yourself with, and I think it'll help make you most successful. Great, great stuff. So I have two things. One would be start your database when you have zero people to put in there. Uh, because you have the time to do it as opposed to going back five years later, which is what I did also going back five years later and trying to create it and then spending, you know, you actually lose out on business because you're spending time if you don't hire somebody to do it for you. So start your systems early on um, when you have n nothing to do with those systems, like just create them. And then also don't reinvent the wheel, like reach out to people that have done it before you and are doing it better than you. And this is still something that I, I rely on is like, if I see somebody doing something great on social media, like I'm gonna reach out and say like, can I copy this? Teach me how you did this. Most of us are pretty collaborative, which is amazing. And there's no reason to sit there and try to figure out how to do something, you know, wrong, usually the first few times when someone else is doing it well. So just don't be afraid to reach out and ask for help when you wanna try something new, create something new or grow. Absolutely. Um, I remember something Anthony told me when I first started out um, that was really, really helpful that I've used through my, through my business so far is not all business is good business. And so um, being really intentional about the people that you choose to work with um, has, has made all the difference for me and my quality of business, my quality of life and balance. So for me, that's helpful to remember through the years and say, wait, wait, is this gonna be someone I'm aligning with? Is this someone who's gonna respect my boundaries and my, my you know, value system here? Um, so that's been really helpful and I've tried to implement that. Um, and then also just that, that whole um, getting away from like the scarcity mindset, like there is enough business to go around. And so when you lose out on one of those like ones that you felt like it was like a slam dunk or a family or you know friend or family member you're like oh it stings but being able to know like okay that was probably saved me from a relationship issue maybe or something you know hey it's all the best and how many times have we lost a listing or a buyer and then continue to wish them the best and been like genuinely excited for them and then you get the next call you know the next time they move so just kind of creating those um you know, like responses that are just completely genuine and um, consistent throughout the years and years in business um, always come back around to um, just just bring you kind of more fulfillment and, and business leader is what I found in mine. Yeah, so it's so important because what uh, I would like you guys all to hear is that everyone has their own way of building a business, right? And there's no right or wrong. There's no good or bad. There's what works for you. And what worked for me in my business has been my database because that was, to me, the most valuable thing that I owned. But I've also built my business in so many different ways over 29 years, had so many different versions of success. But I do want you to understand the value, especially if you're new of your database. And I'll tell you a quick story of Linda Buckmaster, who 
It's okay, Ashley. She does really well. No, listen, well. that's she why did, I'm sharing. I sold 50 million she last year without a database, so you can be okay. Last year without a database, so. But it, but everybody has a different way, right? And for me, I take it to being willing to help anybody. And in 1997, I sold a $50,000 HUD home. You might have heard this story to Linda Buckmaster. And Linda Buckmaster has since bought and sold eight properties through me. But better yet, she has referred people who have referred people who have referred people who have referred people literally eight levels deep, 65 referrals, over $300,000 in commissions in 25 years. Not only that, but just last week I closed on a client that was actually in that referral tree. And so that is what has worked for me for a long time. So my goal with putting all of these amazing women up here is to help you understand it's whatever works for you. And you can build whatever version of success that you want, whatever style that is, whatever. I mean, that's the beauty of the real estate industry. Is there another industry that we can do that in? I mean, I, I don't know of one. And I think that it's amazing that we're able to do that. And so I just wanted to say a huge thank you, round of applause to our moms. Thank you guys so much for being up here today. And thanks for not chickening out, all of you. I appreciate each one of you for being here. And this has been fantastic. Has this been great, guys? Awesome.